composing gloves here and today I'm going to show you how to take a sample and get it sliced up and place these slices automatically so that they play back correctly at the, at the correct time. And I'm going to show you some cool things you can do with this method, some reasons why you might choose a different method. And yeah, let's dive right into it. So this is only possible because of a tool made by DBlue. And I'll link that down in the description. You're going to go ahead and download that, open up Renoise, double click the file, move the file somewhere you're going to keep to, double click it, and it'll automatically update uh, for Renoise 3, this is 3.3, but whatever version you're working and check the forms for any sorts of updates and you should be good to go. It's been installed, you're ready to go. So once it's been installed, let's go ahead, let's grab a loop. I'm going to go ahead and delete this loop. We'll just go ahead, come in here, delete it, and we will load it up again. So we're fresh start. I'm going to go into the sampler. I'm going to set my sensitivity to like around 13 for this particular loop. You can change it to whatever yours is. I'm just going to auto slice it. So it's been auto sliced. We get a bunch of slices. And now we're going to go back to the page and place your edit cursor at the top corner because that's where it's going to start putting stuff. And we're going to right click it, go to pattern, and then you should have a slices to pattern. If this isn't there, then you didn't install it correctly or it's been changed. So check the forms and stuff to see if this stuff has, has been updated or changed. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to click that and it places the slices we have down with the precise uh, delays to make it play back in time. So now if we play it, it works. And we could slow this way down. So the original tempo is what, 90? So put it 90. And away we go. So we're good to go there. And if we play the metronome just to show you it's in time. We can speed it up. So on and so forth. Now, some cool things you can do with this. So this opens up some some kind of weird doors. Uh, there's a couple things you can do. So the first classic stuff you can do, right? You can do stuff like re-trigger, um, you know, on some stuff. You could reverse some things. You could put a weird arpeggio command in here. Like, you know, standard stuff. And, you know, have some fun with it. So there's that kind of stuff you could do with it. It accomplishes little micro edits and it automatically places it for you. So you could do it that way. Uh, some other, some more weird stuff. And, and this is stuff that you might be a little more interested in is if you come into the slices, say we select every other slice here. Whoops, let's uh, do this. I wish there was an easier way to select every other slice, but right now you kind of have to do it like this. So let's just say we've selected, you know, these slices. You can turn on beat sync for these, and it's only on for these, it's not on for any of the others, and change it to one. And this is going to basically do some crazy stuff with the pitch, play it really fast. So every other slice is just gonna be like this weird thing. And uh, when, we, when we play it, you can have some fun with it. And we could come in and say, hey, let's change these. See, this is why I wish we could like set these in like groups. I'm gonna have to really research this a bit more. And we could set these to like, you know, two. And then we could come down here and place a couple others at a different, a different rate. Like let's turn on beat sync for these and set these at four. And then we'll have a group right here and we'll turn on beat seek for these and set these at, I don't know, three. So this is one of the cool things you could do if you specifically slice things, you get access to, you know, all these little sub features that you can do to create some cool rhythms, change up the drum groove, get some sort of wonky things going on. Now, what are some reasons why you might not choose to do it this way? Uh, because you've got beat sync, right? So let's just, uh, let's take this and we will, we're going to go ahead, duplicate it. And in the duplication, we're going to go to the sample. We're going to go back to the root sample. We're going to right click and we're going to, uh, to go to slices and we're going to select all markers. Oh, control shift A apparently. And we're just going to delete those. 
So, okay, we're back to the beginning, and there's a couple other things we could do, right? We could have put down a, a, a note, and in here, we could beat sync it this way. And this gives us access to um, the different time stretching modes in a little bit more of a conventional sense. And that's one thing you could do. That's the fastest way to do it. And it's just a different way of working. It's going to open up different editing options. Standard options will still be available to you, but the slice command specifically will now work differently. And this brings me to the next point on why you might not want to use slices is you could take this, right? And we could copy this and paste it all the way down. And then we could put a slice command down on each bit and have the last one go to FF. And we could interpolate it and use control I. And what this does now is the slice will offset and play it through. So we've essentially manually enforced beat sync. And it's a little bit different because it's it's, a, it's sort of tied to the resolution of the track. There's all there's all sorts of weird implications here. We could get into with, uh, for example, we could change the lines per beat using the ZX command, and this would change the resolution. Because if you actually uh, alter this and interpolate, um, some some weird stuff can happen. So th th there's a there's those kinds of options that can also occur. Uh, but what's great about this way is this one's a little bit more tempo resistant. What I mean by that is here I've got another loop and on track one, it's been configured to play how we did the first way. It used the slicer tool. See how it just gets kind of weird? It just gets totally weird here. And and that's just because on some the, on some slices, the way this works is if you deviate too much away from the initial tempo, this method begins to kind of not work that great um, just because of how fast it plays through some of the slices. Where over here, because this, this information really isn't tied to any sort of a tempo. So if the gaps here on some of these are bigger, it's going to play through this at a different rate according to the BPM, which can screw with the timing of the material in it. So it's not the most tempo resistant, but if you use something like the slice or the beat sync, um, it don't care. It's going to play it. Now here I'm using, you know, this version. So it's going to, there's like a set resolution to where this happens. But we could, of course, increase this like I mentioned before, or we could use the beat sync. And then, of course, you can always use the samples and then use and just sequence it in yourself and make a new beat. But then you're not really playing back the loop like you would be before, if you know what I'm saying. But anyways, that's a couple options. It's a really cool tool. It's one that I definitely think you should consider using. And if you're gonna stay near the target tempo, then it's not really an issue. But if you're gonna be doing some stuff way out of tempo, uh, you can kind of get some weird options out there. Uh, but one of the doors this opens is the bizarre way you can handle working with these things, which I think can be really worth it in its own right. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know, subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.